I want to go over some basic phlebotomy equipment. So this is the stuff that you will need in your office to do blood draws for your patients in order to process the blood products for platelet-rich fibrin. Very basic equipment, but I thought it was worthwhile to go over it. First thing I want to discuss is a tourniquet. Latex-free tourniquet. I use one that has a Velcro strap, secures nicely around the patient's arm. Comes in various sizes. You've got extra large, large, small, and medium. So you can have that on hand. A next thing would be an alcohol prep pad. I use this to prep the skin in the area of the vein which I'm going to perform the blood draw on. You can either let that air dry or sometimes you can use a gauze to dry the skin after you've done that. Now, as we move ahead, you have a couple of options as I see it. Basic option number one that I use more often than not is this system. It is a holder, which is the plastic thing here, and what we call a vacutainer eclipse needle. And the way this works is we remove the clear end off of the vacutainer eclipse needle and we secure it into the holder. It screws right in there, just like that. Once this is in place, you can then Remove the green cover, which exposes the phlebotomy needle. Now the needle is beveled, and we're going to go over detail how to do this in an actual patient at a later video. So you use the, vi the, the beveled edge of the needle, insert it directly into the vein. I use the anti-cubital fossa vein more often than not. Sometimes you use the forearm, sometimes the hand. just depends on where I can get the best access. But you use bevel up, you place that into the vein, and then you can seat the vacutainer, which is the red top blood collection tube. Blood will fill the tube, and then you can take it out and go to your second one. And most of the time, I'll draw two to four of these, depending on how much platelet-rich fiber and membrane that I would like to have. So you can do a direct access into the vein. I do have IV started on most of my patients because I sedate my patients. So you can also use this to access a port on an IV and draw blood the same way. So a couple options if you have an IV. If you don't have an IV, you can use the system. One of the beautiful things about it is once you're finished and you withdraw the needle, you can snap this into place. It is a safety mechanism to keep you from having a needle stick. So that's system number one. I will say that once you remove the needle, you're going to need something basic like a 2x2 two two gauze. And I use Dermaclear tape. You fold that up into a small square, place pressure, tape it in place to help secure that access for hemostasis after your blood draw. A second system is what we call the safety wing blood collection set. And I've seen these used as well. This is a little different. It has a holder. It has a, what I call a pigtail IV uh, set on it or tubing. And then it has these little wings and a beveled needle. Same thing, beveled needle up into the vein. You can also use this into an IV port, just as I've explained in the previous set. But you draw blood. I'm going to cover this needle back up. But you draw blood in the same fashion and you secure your vacutainer or red top blood collection tubes in the same fashion. They fill up. You can do two, four, um, six, eight, whatever you need. And that is the second option on what you would need to draw blood. Of course, you need your personal protective gear, gloves, mask, eye shield to protect you against bloodborne pathogens. That goes without saying. This is a vacutainer eclipse box. There's the needle. Uh, needles come in and then this is a safety wing blood collection set and I ordered this stuff from McKesson and when you pull this together minus the tourniquet you're looking at a, a buck or two per patient so it's very low cost from this standpoint as to what you would need to get it set up to do phlebotomy or to draw blood on your patients so that that covers the basic setup and the equipment needed to do blood draws I will go ahead and tell you this. One of the concerns that I hear among the dentists is they're a little intimidated about drawing blood. Well, I want to tell you, folks, you guys are doing invasive procedures on the hardest tissues in the body, enamel, dentin. You're taking teeth out. You're doing oral surgery. You're removing bone. 
You're already doing pretty in-depth and invasive procedures. This one should not intimidate you. It's just different. It gets you out a little bit out of your comfort zone, but don't let that hold you back. You can do this and you can implement platelet-rich fiber and into your practice, which is very beneficial for the patient and you as the practitioner because it, it makes your job easier as far as healing after surgical procedures. All right, so phlebotomy, basic phlebotomy. The first thing you're looking for is where to get access. You can look at the back of the hand. The dorsum of the hand is one place. Sometimes you can go to the wrist right here. The forearm, they're pretty straight, but my preference is to go up here in the anacubital fossa. This is usually the best place to get the biggest vein, and so that's what I focus on traditionally. So those are your options when it comes to IV access. And you get more comfortable with it, you can get smaller veins, but my, my suggestion if you're just starting out is to look in the AC and, and see if there's something there available. So the first thing we're going to focus on, we can go up here. So the first thing we're going to focus on is just tourniquet placement. So if I'm going to the AC, I'm going to go up around the bicep. I'm going to have the patient squeeze their fist, which will help pronounce these veins. And as you can see here, we've got a couple of veins that we can look at here. So I'm going to have Kristen, she's going to hold steady here. I'm not going to do a noodle stick on her. I'm not going to do a blood draw on her, but I am going to go through the steps and show you how I would do so. So the first thing you do after you have your tourniquet on is you want to clean the skin. I use just a small alcohol swab or prep pad. You can go one swipe. You can come by with a dry two by two gauze. After that, you're going to be looking at, as the systems we talked about before, this is the needle holder with the needle system. Pop back the safety pop off the green cap. As you can see, there's a bevel on this needle. And when I access the vein, you wanna go straight into the vein along its long axis, and you want the bevel up. So you would go in at an angle, about a 30 degree angle, bevel up into the long axis of the vein. Once you make contact with the vein, you're gonna seat your vacutainer in place, which you may have to move the, the needle of position back and forth. It will eventually fill the test tube or the vacutainer tube with blood. So that's the one system. Once you're finished, you can close the cap. Safety locks on. Of course, the tube is out. Place that to the side. And then we already have these pre-made. It's just a piece of Dermaclear tape with a two by two gauze. Fold it up and you just place that in place, put pressure on the position and remove your tourniquet. So that's one way of doing it. The other system is the, the safety wing. The safety wing has a butterfly needle on it. It has the same holder, but it has a pigtail. You take off the needle cap. Again, you can see that it has a bevel, beveled needle. Use the wings of the butterfly needle. Same thing, long axis of the vein, bevel up into the vein, and then place your blood collection tubes into the holder and fill those up, two, four, whatever you need to go to the centrifuge. Again, after you're finished with that, you will place the two by two gauze with thermocryl tape and then remove the tourniquet. Okay, so basically what we're doing is we're taking the two blood collection tubes with the blood in it. We're gonna put it into our 
centrifuge and you do it opposite on the centrifuge wheel, opposite sides. I have placed places to put four tubes if I need them, but I place it opposite, close the lid, lock the lid, and then we go <clears throat> 3,000 RPMs for 10 minutes, 10 to 12, depending on which articles you read, it's 10 to 12 minutes at 3,000 to 3,500. This runs between 3,000 and 3,250 is the specs on this particular unit. And what we'll do is we'll spin this and we'll pull it out of the centrifuge after the 10, 12 minutes and we'll have our PRF that we'll be able to process for placement over our implants. This is the bonus module on Sticky Bone. Uh, this is something that I recently added. We've been doing this in the practice for quite some time, but I wanted to add this module. And it's early 2019, so a little late to the game on this, but I wanted to show you how we do it here in the office. You're going to hear some background noise. We're, we have a good time in the office, so you're going to hear some laughter and some voices. Uh, this is a sedated patient, uh, established IV. And what we're doing here is we're using a red top vacutainer tube and we blocked or we've clamped off the IV near the uh, access and we're doing a blood draw using these vacutainers as you've seen in the phlebotomy section of the course. And we're going to pull two of these off so she's replacing the vacutainer here, going to replace it with a new one. After this is full she's going to take the clamp off, take off the tourniquet and we'll let the IV run again. They're going to take the two vacutainers and place them in the centrifuge for processing of the PRF. We're going to let that run for three minutes. We found that three minutes is the best time frame for us to get a good process on the PRF liquid to use with the sticky bone component of, of what we're talking about here. So she's taken out the needle. She's going to undo the clamp here, let the IV start flowing, take off the tourniquet. And this is the end stage of the three minutes processing in the GraphCo non-variable speed centrifuge. And you're going to hear, hear us in the background here. We're, we're cutting up a little bit. But we're going to let this spin down, stop completely. We don't stop it with our fingers. It's a safety issue as well as I think it messes up the processing of the uh, plasma and the PRF. So we'll let this thing stop. It takes a little patience and it's a, a long wait, but works really well for us if we don't try and stop the centrifuge with any instrument or any of our uh, fingers. So we're going to take out the tube and uh, one of my assistants here, they, they do this, primarily they do all this for me. They're better at it than I am at this point. So I'm monitoring the patient and they're going to take out the red vacutainer tube, take off the top and she's going to use an instrument. We use a sterile instrument. We're just going to block the clot from coming out, the PRF clot, pour a little bit of that liquid gold into the bone graft dap and dish and we're just going to let it sit there. Give that about five, six minutes and this is what you're going to get. You're going to get a nice clump of sticky bone. She's going to move that around, show you, pick it up, show you how it sticks together. Works really well and then in a minute she's going to take an instrument and she's going to cut it in half. This is her picking it up, showing you how it sticks together and it's nice to use in the uh, surgical site to place it, pack it like a mortar with an instrument. 
You can cut it in pieces. She's going to do that here and show you how that's done in just a second. Something pretty simple. And use those pieces independently as you see fit. And that, my friends, is sticky bone. Works really well. You should try it out.